Let's use integration by parts to integrate x over the square root of x plus 3. This is actually one we could do using u substitution or we can do it using integration by parts. If you look back at what we did at the end of the lesson on u substitution, we did examples like this where we had two pieces, both of which involved x, and I'll show you briefly how we set that up. We would do something like u equals x plus 3, because you wouldn't want u to just equal x, that would just be relabeling things, it wouldn't actually simplify. And then du would equal dx, and then to deal with the other x, you would just rearrange to have x equals u minus 3. And then you could rewrite this as the integral of u minus 3 over the square root of u, du, which can be simplified because now we can break this up into two fractions. You could write this as the integral of u over the square root of u minus 3 over the square root of u. And then each of those pieces you could rewrite as something times u to a power and apply the power rule and so on. So you could do it that way and then resubstitute back into terms of x. So this is one you could do with u substitution, but I want to illustrate how to use integration by parts to do the same one. Once you've seen both methods, you can kind of pick which one you prefer for this type of problem and for any integral that you could use either method for. But I want you to see it both ways so that you can apply whichever method you choose. Now for our approach, we want to think about how to split this into u and dv. And I mentioned this before, but watch out again that with u substitution, we could pick kind of any piece of this to be u, and our substituted form could have all sorts of different things. It could be, in our case, u minus 3 over the square root of u, for instance. But when we're doing integration by parts, the setup is much more structured, we're much more limited. When we make our substitution, we have to pick things so that our integral looks exactly like u times dv. It can't be u divided by dv, it can't be u to the power of dv, anything like that. It has to be u times dv. So you have to split it somehow to make that work. So for this one, let me rewrite this as x times 1 over the square root of x plus 3. So it's clear that we've got a product of two things. And now, just like we've done before, it kind of makes sense that one of these will be u, and the other combined with the dx will be dv. LIPD doesn't really help us too much here, because there's not a difference of two different types of functions. But what may help is to think through what's going to happen. When we make our substitution, whichever one is u is going to be differentiated to give us du. Whichever one is dv is going to be integrated. And you want to think about which is going to simplify things. So if we select x to be u, when we find du, things will simplify dramatically. In other words, that x will vanish when we take its derivative. If we chose things the other way, if we selected 1 over the square root of x plus 3 to be our u, when we found du, it would actually get more complicated and none of the x's would go away. And on the other hand, the x as part of dv would get integrated to give us 1 half x squared. So things would kind of get worse if we selected x to be part of dv and 1 over the square root of x plus 3 to be u. So let's try it the other way. Let's try letting u equal x and dv equals 1 over the square root of x plus 3 times dx. This may be wrong and we could go back and try it the other way, but it seems like this approach will be more doable than the reverse. So now we're going to find du, which is just dx. Finding v takes a little bit of work. We need to be able to integrate 1 over the square root of x plus 3. To do this, let me rewrite that. Let me replace 1 over the square root of x plus 3 with x plus 3 to the power of negative 1 half. That may be easier to see with a integral. 
To do this, we actually need to do a quick U substitution. But I'm going to skip over the details because if you've done enough U substitution examples by now, you should be able to see that what's inside here will be U. DU is just going to equal DX, so there won't be any constants that get introduced or that we have to deal with. So really, we could think of it as just X to the negative one half or U to the negative one half. And when we integrate that, we would get u to the one half divided by one half or multiplied by two. And then there wouldn't be any other constants that would throw us off because it's just x plus three. It's not something like three x plus three. Of course, we'd be used to putting a plus c on there. But again, when we're doing this integration by parts, c can be anything. So we just leave it as zero to keep our lives as simple as possible. So if you need to pause and do that integral on your own, writing it all down, feel free to do so, but it's just a quick U substitution problem. Now that we have this, the rest of the problem is just like the others we've done. It follows the same structure. We set up the formula. U dV, the integral of that equals UV minus the integral of v du. So here we have our original integral equals u times v. So this looks a little bit complicated, but stick with it. Minus the integral of v times du. Now the nice thing is du is just dx, so this is just the integral of v dx. So we need to integrate this now, but it doesn't look so bad after doing this example here where we found v by integrating something very similar. It's going to be the same approach where we're going to use a quick u substitution, but it's a, a u substitution without any complications. So it's a very straightforward, uncomplicated u substitution. And again, I will skip over some of the details, but if you need to pause and do that on your own, writing down all the steps, certainly feel free to do so. So this is gonna carry along the two, and then x plus three to the one half is going to give us x plus three to the three halves when we integrate, divided by three halves, which is the same as multiplied by two thirds. Now we do need to plus C because we're actually working out the problem. So again, if you need to pause and double check that integral using U substitution, go for it. But otherwise, we're done. We can just simplify a little bit or we could just stop there and leave it unsimplified. But just for the sake of a little bit of cleanup, I will combine the two and two thirds into four thirds. So there's our final answer. I should note, if you do this problem, like I've shown over here, using U substitution, or you do it using integration by parts, your answer will be the same, but it will look different. In other words, it will be two things that are algebraically equivalent, but have fairly different forms. They're not gonna look like the same answer at all. But it turns out that if you, for instance, graph those two, answers, you would see that they're the same graph. So just a note, if you work this out by integration by parts, and you see someone else has worked it out by U substitution, don't expect your answers to look the same. But if you evaluated them, you'd find out they're actually equivalent.